In this video presentation, we're going to continue to look at the miniature RCBO, and in this case, the miniature RCBO made by Crabtree. We put a video up a few weeks ago, and in that video presentation, I was asked many questions, mostly about the test button. The test button on this one is located at the bottom of the switching mechanism. So obviously there was questions about when I press the test button, will the mechanism itself be restricted by the finger press? Because previously on the RCBOs, when they were the larger style, the test button was at the top. So what we'll do in this video presentation is I'll connect up this RCBO and we'll actually liven it up and we'll actually press that test button and see what happens to the switch mechanism in relationship to our fingered position. Also, I want to have a look inside this consumer unit because A, it's very neat, but the next one that we see upstairs isn't. So I want to show you the standard that I expect with my learners when dressing a consumer unit before we move into an area where there is a test rig and that rig has been used many times and obviously the conductors in there are not as well laid out as in this one. We'll also reiterate how to fit a circuit breaker and an RCBO in a Crabtree star breaker distribution board as well in this presentation. So you can see in this distribution board we've got a main RCCB switch rated at 30 milliamps and we've got a number of circuits protected by that RCCB. We can also see that the student has made some effort to make sure his conductors look similar to each other with the curls into the breakers, the earth and neutral bars. Also, the learner has identified each circuit as well. So we can see circuit number one's line conductor, it's neutral, and it's CPC are in the corresponding number one terminals within the neutral and earth bar. The issues we have at college with this style of distribution board is that we lack discrimination, a word we expect to be changed to selectivity with exactly the same meaning. In other words, when the RCCB operates, it will actually de-energize all the circuits within the consumer's unit. Hence, chances are we're going to move over to RCBOs in the future. Let's just remind ourselves how we're going to fit a Crabtree Star circuit breaker, remembering the line connections picked up off the bar at the back here, which is connected to the buzz bar here off the dim rail. So we've got the buzz bar here. Simply just hook it onto the dim rail and hopefully click it back into position, like so meaning that in this style we don't need a buzz bar to be positioned underneath to connect into the breakers. The buzz bar itself is situated at the back here and picked up into the breaker as shown previously. So I've moved across to a metal clad two-way Crabtree star breaker distribution board, this time with a linked main switch or double pole switch. So we're going to have to introduce our own earth fault protection for the circuit. We're going to introduce that in the form of a miniature RCBO, exactly the same as before. Our connection to the buzz bar at the back through this section here, this connects onto the DIN rail. Our terminations at the top, we've got two positions, one here called load two, which is your line conductor, and slightly further back here we've got our neutral connection. So our circuits neutral and line will be connected here. It clips onto the buzz bar and DIN rail exactly the same as before, so we clip it onto the back like so, and then just push it into position. This here then is connected into the neutral bar, as our circuit neutral will be in the top back, our line connection will be in the front one, again, load two and neutral. So I've moved up to one of our testing rigs where we've got a split load board, so a more traditional board, linked main switch or double pole switch for isolation, RCCB protecting a number of circuits, and then another RCCB protecting another number of circuits. Unlike the traditional consumers you use elsewhere in the workshop where we have the main switch is both a main switch and the earth fault protection. The section here is for high integrity circuit, so that's the part I'm gonna fit my miniature RCBO. I've got my line connections ready and I've got my neutral, my CPCs have already been connected into the earth bar. So let's connect up the miniature RCBO next. So I'm gonna to attempt to connect up my RCBO, neutral being in this back section here and the line being in the front one. I'm gonna have it off the actual dim rail at the back to start with just to show you how to connect these up a little easier. So I pop my two neutrals in. I've gone front to front. Torque screwdriver, I'll just nip those up like so. So I've got my two neutrals therefore connected. Take my two lines, front and back. Once again, just nip those up. Okay, so we can see back section's got my two neutrals in, front section's got my two lines in. I put it back onto the dim rail now and hopefully just push it into position, just like so. And now I can torque them up at 1.8 newton meters. 
once, twice. So now it's a case of adjusting my torque screwdriver and I've got to get it now to 1.7. So it's 1.6 there, 1.8 there, and in between is 1.7. Reinsert my screwdriver, plus minus head, and I now can make my connection for my neutral bar. And again, up to the required torque setting. A little bit of fiddling around to obviously make it look a little bit neater, but we've actually connected our conductors in We've got the two lines at the front, load two, two neutrals at the back, and our neutral fly lead is in position. We're now ready to carry out the insulation resistance test. So I've fitted our miniature RCBO here. We've got our load two, where our two line connections for the ring final circuit have been connected. We've got load N, our two neutrals in circuit are connected here. We've got the fly lead that comes up and is connected to the neutral bar. We've got our two CPCs connected over here in the earth bar. So we've got both overcurrent and fault protection being offered by the fuse, as well as earth fault protection being offered by the RCD element of the RCBO. It can be used for additional protection because it's rated at 30 milliamps. And the breaker size for a ring final circuit, an A1 ring final circuit, is 32 amps. And it's a domestic dwelling, so it's a type B. So I'm going to carry out my insulation resistance test. I've made sure my RCBO, the miniature ones, are double pole. So by pushing it into the off position, it's now on for off, We've isolated both live conductors and the insulation resistance test can be taken out from the top. Previously on the RCBOs, the longer throw variety, it said disconnect line and neutral and both fly leads before carrying out the insulation resistance test. So it's gonna save us a lot of time by doing it with this in the off position from the terminals at the top. The eagle eyed amongst you would have noticed the ring final circuit also had USB socket on it. So that's been disconnected. So we won't pick that up on the insulation resistance test either. The probes on here are long enough that they actually reach through to the neutral termination at the back. They're of a length that will reach the termination, so that's good. So we can probe on directly on top of the actual RCBO in the off position to do our live conductors. So if I press and hold, our reading is greater than 999 mega ohms. We're set to 500 volts DC. Change over to our crocodile clip. We'll test between live conductors to earth. Crocodile clip, so line to circuit protective conductor, greater than 999 mega ohms, and then across to the neutral, greater than 999 mega ohms. I'm going to go live next so we can actually see the test button being pressed and what happens in relationship to our finger when it goes from on to off, whether we actually obstruct it. Let's have a look at the next part of the presentation. So I've replaced the consume unit cover, I've energized the installation, so I'm ready to turn it on. So double pole or linked main switch is turned on. So the installation is now live. I'm only going to turn on the circuit that we've been working on, which is the B32 miniature RCBO. So I'm going to turn that one on. And we see that our socket outlet circuit has become live. We talked about the position of the test button being low down here. In a minute, I'll zoom in and show you again. But we've got to press it in this position here. And what's going to happen to the mechanism in relationship to our finger? So as I press it, we can see it's gone off. However, until I move my finger away, it hasn't fully gone down so we can see the words off. So your finger actually stops you seeing the word off, but obviously the mechanism is tripped. Let's do that once more. So energize it, I press the test button. It's hit or stopped against my finger and then fully gone down so I can see off. However, if I was to hold it in the up position, so I'm trying to physically hold it on and I press the test button, we can see the words on but we can clearly see the socket outlet has gone off, the mechanism has operated. I remove my finger, it fully goes off. So your finger will never impair the ability for the device to turn itself off when the test button is pressed. We'll move in a little closer and you'll see that again. So let's show you that nice and close up. So let's turn the socket circuit on. I know you can't see them, but the socket circuit is in the on position now. I press the test button, the socket circuit has gone off. I move my finger away and now you can see the words off, but it was in the off position. Likewise, when I did it before, if there was a fault in circuit and you're physically trying to hold it in, again, you won't be able to, you'll only hold the switch up, the mechanism will drop out. Let's prove that by pressing the test button. The mechanism has dropped out, the socket circuit is off. Even though we can see the word on, I remove my finger and it's fallen to the off position. I hope this video has been some help.